Well, you know that doing your part to help the environment is a worthwhile cause, but what if you could actually be rewarded for your efforts? We'll tell you how Going Green could pay you back in cash, coming up. Well, a new crop of energy efficient buildings is popping up in some unexpected places. It once seemed the trend was exclusive to commercial properties. The buildings uh, that have recently gone green include a college frat house at Georgia Tech, as well as gas stations, fast food restaurants, and even prisons. The big reason for the trend? Lower utility costs from alternative heating and cooling sources, including solar power. While well, Americans look to save money in the current economic climate, many of us may not realize there are new ways to conserve energy and save money right in our own homes. A proposed smart grid power system would allow consumers to control their energy use and to lower their utility costs. So why isn't everyone on board? Paul Molitor is the Senior Industry Director of Smart Grid at NEMA. That's an electrical manufacturing industry group. He joins us to explain it all. Hi, Paul. Great to have you. Hello. Thank you for having me. All right. So what is a smart grid? How does this work? Well, a smart grid, essentially, well, it, what's going to happen is smart grid is eventually going to be just like the grid that we're looking at today. But what we're doing is we're overlaying uh, communications and uh, 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 two-way power flows on top of the electric grid. So what you're going to do is, by the fact that the grid can communicate better, is you're going to have better control for the utility companies. And it's also going to provide more information to the consumer so that they have more control over their electric usage inside their home. So if you're linked up to something like this, could you possibly get an email alert or get a message that somehow tells you, hey, you're really pushing the boundaries of how much power you're using this month or is something in particular that you're doing is going to push your bill up, something like that? Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things. And we want to be able to push it right down to the cell phone. If you think about the way that you interact with your utility company today, they come out and they do a re meter reading once a month and then you pay the bill. And if there's an outage, you might call the uh, the uh, the power company. But now the grid is going to be able to send these alerts back to the utility company. So your interaction with the utility company is completely going to change. It's going to become more frequent. It's going to be electronic and it's going to be literally on your desktop or on your cell phone. Okay. So how do you respond to folks who worry about the big brother aspect of this? They worry their privacy is going to be compromised right. in some way. If people are looking into their homes and seeing how much power they're using and whether they're going to get in trouble for that. Right. Yeah. There's a, there's actually a major push uh, in terms of both security and privacy with what we're doing with Smart Grid. Uh, we're very interactive with the uh, with the privacy groups that are out there. And uh, in fact, as we go through the standardization process for Smart Grid, there's a huge team uh, within the uh, Smart Grid interoperability panel, which is focusing on all of this, that uh, that we're focusing on security and we're making sure that that homeowner information stays private and stays secure. So will this be the kind of thing that you sort of opt in, or if your local utility or government um, passes a mandate that you'll have to opt in in an effort to save energy? I mean, right. how, how would that side of it work? Well, actually, many of the programs right now are already opt-in. There's a number of, of utility companies out there that have for both consumer and for uh, commercial properties. So uh, many of the, it's already started. Uh, in the future, it all depends on which way the regulation goes. Some of it could be mandated, it, mandated but I think the better choice is to keep as much as possible opt-in, just so that we can accommodate maybe the consumer groups that, that aren't as comfortable with the technology. And I very quickly wanted to ask you, if you do this right, if you do it well, there are some options that would actually pay you back? Yes, yeah, absolutely. For example, there's a demand response program that's out there. So if you're on a hot summer day, you've got a rising heat index and a demand for air conditioning, uh, certain programs that are in place with utility companies today will give you a credit if you can curb your energy usage during those peak periods. And that's, that's uh, called demand response and critical peak uh, management. All right, that's always good motivation for folks. Yes, Paul Molitor, thank you very much for coming in. All right, thank you.